The gases used for the simulations will vary depending on your DLCO machine and its specifications and your patient population. The gases are available in low, medium, and high ranges. Pulmonary function labs catering primarily to pediatric patients should typically use either the low or medium gases, while labs serving adult populations should use medium and high range gases. Also, to provide the highest level of accuracy in testing, the gases should be of primary grade from a reliable source. For the best results, use primary plus gas concentrations from Hans Rudolph. Primary plus gases are labeled to an accuracy level of plus or minus 1%. For more information regarding the simulator gas concentrations specific to your DLCO device, see your DLCO simulator instruction manual. To open and close the gas cylinder outlet valve, use the flush type valve wrench provided in the DLCO simulator kit. When you are ready to perform the testing, turn the valve counterclockwise to open. Then, when you've completed your testing, or you need to change from using one gas cylinder to another, turn the valve clockwise to close it. Pistons, or plungers, project from the back end of the syringes. The large plunger has a small locking collar that you slide forward or back to set the desired inhaled volume. This plunger will be used during the testing phase, synthesizing the act of inhaling the DLCO system's gases. The smaller plunger will be used to simulate a patient's exhaled volume and subsequent analyzing of the exhaled gases. Like the large syringe, the smaller plunger has a locking collar but it should not be moved about. It should remain set at the zero mark. On the end opposite of the pistons, considered the front, is the manifold, which houses the simulator's three ports and three valves. The gas connection port is off to one side, directly below a black push-button valve. The wording, standardized gas connection, is imprinted on the manifold near the port. The port itself, equipped with a quick connect fitting, is where we've already attached the regulator tubing assembly. It is through this tubing that the simulated alveolar gas is delivered to the small syringe, flushing and filling the syringe at various stages of the testing. The largest of the ports is situated in the center of the manifold. This is the port used to connect your DLCO device to the simulator, just as you would have a patient connected to the mouthpiece. Ideally, the tubing needed to establish a good connection between the two systems should be limited to the same dead space used with patient testing. Check to see if the port that comes with the simulator will provide a good fit with your system. A blue Collins adapter often will provide a good connection. You can also contact Hans Rudolph and they will supply you with an adapter specific to your equipment. Between the gas connector port and the large port is a smaller port. This port has a check valve and is used for venting gas in the smaller syringe without allowing in room air. In addition to the ports, the manifold holds three valves, each of which serves a specific purpose. The largest of the three valves is situated on the top of the manifold, above the port used to connect the simulator to your DLCO device. This valve is three-pronged and marked with a curved arrow. The arrow lets you know which connection is active. If the valve is turned all the way clockwise, one end of the arrow points to the large port, and the other end points to the small syringe. This means that the alveolar gas connection is active. If the valve is turned all the way counterclockwise, one end of the arrow points to the large port, and the other end points to the large syringe. When the valve is in this position, the syringe that mimics the act of inhaling is connected to your DLCO system. Situated between the large valve and a smaller black button valve is a two-pronged valve. This valve indicates if the connection between the small syringe and the gas venting port is open or closed. The manifold is marked with open and closed labels so as to avoid possible confusion of the status of the valve. Directly above the gas connector port, on top of the manifold, is a small black button valve. If the alveolar gas is connected to the simulator at the gas connector port, pressing the black valve allows gas into the small syringe. The DLCO simulator is now assembled, and you've taken a look at its components and how they work together. Before continuing, please take just a few moments to review the key points of this section. Then if you want to return to a particular aspect of this section, simply follow the links provided. Keep the original containers and packing materials that the DLCO simulator is shipped in, so you can use them again when it is time to return the simulator to Hans Rudolph Incorporated for routine maintenance and recalibration. When assembling the simulator, 
Firmly secure all connecting parts, but be careful not to over-tighten them. Make sure that you can identify the simulator's main components, valves, and ports, and understand what they do before you begin testing.